Welcome to section 8 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing Carinibacterium diphtheriae, which you can see right here. Carinibacterium diphtheriae sounds kind of like corn, so we thought a haunted corn maze scene would work well to help you remember this organism. As you can see from the image, this corn maze is getting shut down, but why? By the end of the video, it will all make sense. Before we go any further, pay attention to the background. That's right, there's a purple looking sunset. Just like in our other videos, this should help you remember that Carinibacterium diphtheriae is gram positive. This is an actual gram stain of Carinibacterium diphtheriae. Notice that the organism appears purple, hence the gram positive classification. But it's also rod shaped, which is why it's a bacillus. The shape is a bit unique because it looks kind of like a club. You can see this pretty obviously right here. Notice that there's a prominent end on the organism right here. Okay, with this in mind, let's return to the story. The corn maze is being shut down because this poor kid has lice all over his head, which he contracted while he was in the corn maze. His mother wasn't too happy about this, so she's on the phone complaining about how this terrible business needs to be shut down. We've shown lice on this kid's head because it sounds kind of like lysogenic. This part of the scene should help you remember that Carinibacterium diphtheriae must first be lysogenized by a bacteriophage before it produces a virulent exotoxin. Simply put, this just means that a virus which codes for the diphtheria exotoxin must integrate its nucleic acid into the bacterium's genome in order for the bacterium to become dangerous. So again, lice for lysogenized. Also notice that the mom is extremely distressed about this whole situation. That's why she's using her asthma inhaler to get more oxygen and attempt to calm her down. We've used the inhaler in other videos to represent aerobic organisms, but let me refresh your memory. Inhalers are commonly used by asthmatics to facilitate oxygen delivery to the lungs, so it can be thought of as a symbol for aerobic organisms, which are bugs that grow well in the presence of a lot of oxygen. So the asthma inhaler in this image should help you remember that Carinibacterium diphtheriae is an aerobic organism. Finally, notice that she's using her telephone to tell the agency about how her son got lice in this filthy corn maze. Telephone and tell sound kind of like telluride agar, so these two ideas should help you remember that the organism can be grown on telluride agar. This is an image of cysteine telluride agar. Telluride is just a mineral that is used in the agar. Notice that there are black colonies that can be seen in the image. This is most apparent right here. Okay, moving on, notice that we've added a guy in an alien costume next to the corn maze. This shouldn't be too surprising. This is a haunted corn maze after all, so a scary looking alien guy seems pretty fitting. Anyways, we've included this alien guy in the image to help you remember that aniline dyes are used to stain metachromatic granules red and the rest of the cell blue. Metachromatic granules are inclusions seen within the organism that can be used during ATP synthesis. So again, alien for aniline dyes. If you look towards the back of the image, you can see that there is mist near the corn maze. We'll be using mist to represent that an organism is transmitted through aerosolized respiratory droplets because mist carries water molecules just like respiratory droplets carry pathogens. Okay, now let's talk about the guy in the booth. Notice that he's pulling on his tie from all of the stress of his business being shut down. The tie wraps around the neck and the fact that he's pulling on it should help you remember that Carinibacterium diphtheriae causes pharyngitis. Now you can see why he's so stressed out. This guy with a bureau shirt on is handcuffing him. Must be a pretty serious crime to have your business infested with lice. This part of the scene should help you remember details about the diphtheria toxin. This toxin has two subunits, an A subunit and a B subunit. The letter B in bureau on this guy's shirt is here to help you remember that this part of the scene is about the B subunit of the toxin. The B subunit binds to host cell receptors and induces endocytosis of the toxin. To help you remember the function of the B subunit, we've shown the bureau guy handcuffing the business owner. Just like B subunit binds to the host cell, this bureau guy is binding the business owner with handcuffs. Okay, now let's discuss the A subunit of the toxin. To help you remember this, we've shown another guy in a shirt that says agency. The A in agency should help you remember that this part of the scene is about the A subunit. The A subunit inhibits host cell protein synthesis by inhibiting elongation factor 2, or EF2, during elongation of protein synthesis. To help you remember this, we've shown the agency guy using an extendable baton to silence this group of protesters. So extendable baton for inhibits elongation factor 2. Also notice that for your entertainment, we've shown this cowardly man running away from the scary alien right here. He doesn't really mean anything specifically, but hopefully he'll help you remember the alien in the image, which is ultimately here to help you remember that aniline dyes are used to stain metachromatic granules red and the rest of the cell blue, as we discussed earlier. 
Now we've added some heat lamps to the scene. Businesses commonly use these outdoors to help keep their customers warm, so it seems pretty fitting. The heat lamps generate heat, just like someone with a fever generates a lot of heat. So we've included these to help you remember that a fever may be seen in infected patients. Next, notice that we've included some tires in the background, just like we did in our C. diff image. The tires are circular and resemble the cell membrane. I guess you could say they're kind of like a membrane, but not quite so pseudomembranes. These should help you remember that a pseudomembrane is classically seen in the pharynx on physical examination. This is an image of what the pseudomembrane looks like. As you can see, it's a grayish white substance that has adhered to the posterior pharynx, right here. Okay, now let's turn our attention to the other agency guy in the back of the scene who's closing off the corn maze with a rope. If you look closely at the rope, you can see that it looks kind of like sausage links. This resembles the myelin sheath around an axon, so we've shown it in this image to help you remember that Carinibacterium diphtheriae is neurotoxic. All of these agents didn't walk here. They came here in their car, which you can see on the left side of the image. The car should help you remember that the organism is also cardiotoxic. This may be manifested as myocarditis, heart block, and arrhythmias. So car for cardiotoxic. We've also shown this elk in the background who's looking for some food. Looks like he's found a big field of corn that's ready to be eaten. Elk sounds kind of like elik, so we've included it in this image to help you remember that an elic test can be used to identify toxigenic from non-toxigenic strains of Carinibacterium diphtheriae. Next, notice that this guy is laughing. Laughing sounds like Loeffler's media, so we've included him to help you remember that Carinibacterium diphtheriae can be cultured in Loeffler's medium, where the metachromatic granules may be seen more easily. Okay, so why was this guy laughing in the first place? As you can see, he's not a fan of the feds, so he's laughing while his friend pops the feds' tires. If you look closely, you can see that this guy in the green shirt is using a syringe to pop the tires. Just like in other videos, a syringe is our symbol for a vaccine. So this part of the scene should help you remember that there is a toxoid vaccine which can prevent diphtheria. You'll often hear Tdap or DTAP, which is a combination of multiple vaccines, and this is how the vaccine is usually given. So again, guy popping car tires with a syringe for vaccine. Finally, we've shown the car suspended by little Y-shaped suspension tools that look kind of like immunoglobulins. This is to help you remember that if an unimmunized individual becomes infected, then preformed antibody can be administered to help prevent systemic complications. Okay, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 12-year-old boy who recently moved to the United States from Nepal is brought to the emergency department due to fever, pharyngitis, and heart palpitations. His temperature is 38.5 degrees Celsius, but other vital signs are normal. Physical examination is significant for a gray exudate on the posterior pharynx. A swab of the exudate is obtained. On microscopy, there are gram-positive rods with granules that stain deeply with aniline dyes. He is admitted to the hospital. Which of the following should be done immediately to prevent additional complications? A. Careful monitoring of neurological status. B. Intubation. C. Serial electrocardiograms. D. Preformed antitoxin administration. Or E. Vaccine administration. Okay, hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this boy's presentation is consistent with Carinibacterium diphtheriae. A few points from the question stem that are suggestive of this diagnosis include a recent move from Nepal, which suggests a lack of immunization, a gray exudate on the posterior pharynx, and gram-positive rods with granules that stain deeply with aniline dyes. The exudate is describing the pseudomembrane we talked about earlier. This is a pretty important point. Questions on the actual step one test will commonly avoid buzzwords like pseudomembranes, and instead will describe the pseudomembrane. So for example, a gray exudate on the posterior pharynx. Okay, with this in mind, we're asked what should be done immediately to prevent additional complications. The correct answer is D, preformed antitoxin administration. The antitoxin contains neutralizing antibodies that inactivate the diphtheria toxin. However, the antitoxin is only useful before toxin enters the cell, so it must be administered immediately. A is a good idea and should eventually be done because diphtheria is neurotoxic. However, administration of preformed antitoxin is more important because any delay may allow more of the toxin to enter the cells. B is unnecessary at this point because the boy's respiratory rate is normal, so he doesn't appear to be in any respiratory distress. However, careful airway management is important because the pseudomembrane may cause airway obstruction, so B is incorrect. C is also a good idea because diphtheria is cardiotoxic, but just like A, administration of the antitoxin is more important, so C is incorrect.
E should also be done, but the immune response to vaccination is slow. Therefore, the antitoxin should be given first in someone who is acutely ill, and then vaccine administration can be given later. So E is also incorrect. From the image, recall that the little Y-shaped suspension tools under the car that look kind of like immunoglobulins represent the preformed antibody, or antitoxin, which should be administered to prevent systemic complications in acutely ill patients. And with that, we've concluded this section.